Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade. Today on the show, we're breaking down Jordan Brand's early 2023 preview, the week's hottest releases, and of course, our Hard Pass, which is something that co-writer has been waiting all year to unleash unto the world. That's right, it's my time to shine, baby. <laughs> See what I mean? All right, let's talk about Jordan Brand's first look at the retros that will probably sit in stores in the first quarter of 2023. I mean... Let's be real here. For every Air Jordan 3 reimagined that will sell out in seconds, there's going to be three to four retros that are going to be easy pickups for you and me in store and online. And you know what? That's a good thing. If you're in this for the love of the game, the second most dangerous phrase in the Michael Jordan drinking game with the top spot belonging to the game of basketball. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> don't try this at home. Then it shouldn't matter if a pair of retros are still available six weeks later at a champ sports. And if the price drops, that's even better. So let's break down the brand's look at what's dropping in early 2023, shout out to Nice Kicks with the screen caps, and how they will probably fare at retail. Okay, these are the sellouts that actually make sense. We have the Air Jordan 3 White Cement reimagined on March 11th for 210, the Air Jordan 1 High 85 Black and White on February 15th for 200, the Air Jordan 1 High True Blue on January 14th for 180, the Air Jordan 1 High White Cement on February 25th for 180, and then the Air Jordan 13 Playoffs on February 18th for 210. White Cement 3s are iconic. They are on the real short list of greatest Air Jordans ever made. So anytime they come back, they're going to sell out, and you know what? I can't be mad at it. I ain't mad either. Coll collectors are going to want every variant. Kids are going to want to be a part of the trend. And everybody who doesn't follow sneakers like we do, but knows they are cool, will get them. Yes, we've already made our feelings known about the reimagined route with this release, i.e. we don't like it. But it looks like we're in the minority when it comes to that take. So if you're thinking that maybe the vintage look is going to discourage people from buying them, you're going to be very disappointed on March 11th. And as long as they keep selling out, don't be surprised if in a few years we're getting a pair of reimagined Concords with yellow outsoles and creases. It's gonna happen. As for Jordan 1s, really, as for Jordan 1s, while not every pair of 1s sells out in seconds anymore, the true blue and white cement will absolutely be gone by 7.01 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on their release dates because they are very, very easy to match with most of your outfits. And the most versatile of them all will be the Panda, I mean the Black White High 85s, AKA the Panda Jordans, and you know people are gonna give it that nickname. I'm just prepping you all for that inevitability so you can learn to accept it into your hearts. I have. The, the sellouts that will become the new favorites, the Air Jordan 5 University Blue on March 4th for 225, the Air Jordan 2 Lucky Green on the third on February 3rd for 175, the Women's Air Jordan 4 Oil Green on February 9th for 200. Three different retros, Three different reasons why people will like them long after they're sold out on sneakers and selling for way more at resale than you can imagine. The Air Jordan 5's appeal is obvious to anybody who's seen similar colorways on the Air Jordan 4, Air Jordan 6, and many others. The Carolina Blue makes any pair of J's better, especially classics like the 5's. The Lucky Green 2's have the luck of dropping during Jordan Brand's strongest attempt to make the 2's relevant for the first time in a long time, and I think it's actually working. And then there's the oil green fours that have an OG vibe to them that will make grown ass men try to desperately get a pair with no shame at all. Okay, now this one, every reseller store will have dozens of these in stock and they won't be able to get rid of them. The Air Jordan 6 Cool Gray on February 4th for 200, the Air Jordan 4 SE Craft on February 11th for 210, the Air Jordan 5 Hornets on January 21st for 200, the Women's Air Jordan 1 Laney on February 17th for 180, and the Women's Air Jordan 5 Mars for Her on January 14th for 200. We could also rename this category the sneakers resellers thought they could flip but turned out to be bricks category. Now, let me make my stance clear on this. Sneakers are only bricks if you let yourself be dictated by social media. Don't buy to the hype. Don't, don't buy to the hype. The Jordan 6 Cool Gray should be getting more love, but after seeing how easy it is to get a pair of Midnight Navy or Georgetown 6s, I could see them sitting in stores well into the summer. Now, that's a good thing if you like 6s and don't feel the need to buy everything right away, but it's bad for resellers, and we should all feel bad for resellers, right? 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 Uh, and these, these will sit on store shelves and make it to outlet shops at a deeply discounted price. The women's Air Jordan 14 low, steel gray, March 3rd for 180 bucks. Look, the 14s are generally a fantastic silhouette and the lows are typically underrated by a lot of people. But these, nah. Sneaker grime against humanity. This, this sets the 14 back a little bit. And I hope they give us some OG colorways as a make good for bringing this blight into the world. All right, it's time for the heat check where we bring you everything that's dropping next week and the week after and the week, no, wait. 
Max, it's just the next, it's just the next two weeks. This is the last show of the year, guys. Uh, we have the Nike ISPA Sense Flyknit and Mineral Slate and Smoke Gray. Those are on the 29th for 200. The Air Jordan 2 Chicago on the 30th for 200. The Reebok Pump Omni Zone 2 in white and red on December 31st for 140. The Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0 Cloud White on January 1st for 200. The Adidas NMD R1 White Tint on January 1st for $160. The Kids Air Jordan 4 Messy Room on January 7th. The Air Jordan 7 SE Black Olive on January 7th as well. And here's a handful of Jordans that may or may not release as well, but there's no confirmed release date as of this recording. The Women's Air Jordan 5 Gore-Tex for 220, the Air Jordan 37 Jason Tatum PE on 185, the undefeated Air Jordan 37, and we don't even know about that one. But for our pick of the week, the Nike LeBron 20 Christmas. Christmas? 210? 210? 210. <laughs> After what can only be described as not giving a sh over the past several years, Nike seems to be trying again with holiday themed signature shoes. There was the Kobe 6 Pro Tro Grinch released in 2020, and now with this similarly themed LeBron. 20. Like we talked about a few weeks ago with the Adidas Forum Grinch release, there is a certain segment of the community that seems to think that Kobe 6 Grinch is the one and only Grinch sneaker that can exist. Yeah, that certain segment of the community is wrong. Really wrong. Really wrong. Enjoy the Kobe's, the Forums, and these LeBrons like an ugly Christmas sweater that you should only be allowed to wear between the hours of midnight December 24th and the midnight December 25th. Not a minute more. It's that easy. All right, it's time for this week's Hard Pass where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go. And Look what we got here. It's co-writer's big list of grievances. I knew this guy wasn't going to let the year go by without getting some things off of his chest. Fine, co-writer. You win. That's right. You win. I just want to go on vacation now. So let's fire up the prompter and we'll just read off what he's not feeling in 2022. Until you finish this. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Uh, Twitter. You want to know who really cares about Twitter? Not me. Journalists who overvalue Twitter's importance to society because it makes them feel important. Billionaires who maybe finally figured out being an edgelord means you lose your spot as the richest man in the world to the guy who owns all the luxury brands. Shout out Bernard. And politicians who can't figure out TikTok. Without these two groups and one billionaire feeding the mystical algorithm all of the outrage that can fit in a tweet, Twitter would be a much better place. At the same time, it would also die the following day from a lack of engagement. So let's just metaphorically burn the place to the ground and figure out what the next thing is. We did it with MySpace. Nobody under the age of 25 uses Facebook and someday TikTok will die off too. Let your 500 followers, 80% of which are bots and pity follows, go. Remember Friendster? <laughs> Friendster, really? That's what we're talking about now? And then we have Attack on Titan. Has there been a longer final season than this damn show? No. What started out as an amazing story of kids just trying to make it in a world full of creepy naked titans like generations before them has taken so many twists and turns that they've lost the thread and the heart that made the show so compelling and fun to watch in the beginning. That being said, if Captain Levi can drag his ass for one last episode to take Zeke to the woodshed, it'll all be worth it. Shout out Sasha. Max, yes. The word Max is apparently going to be the name of the joint HBO Max Discovery Plus app. It will bundle the prestige of HBO programming in their vast movie library with the reality TV crap that's on Discovery Plus. Look, if they give us assurance that Tokyo Vice season two and Barry season four are in the can and ready to go, and they add in the AEW and Ring of Honor back catalog to the service, then we're okay for now. But honestly, I won't believe it until I see it. Hideo Kojima, damn it. Kojima-san, co-writer wanted nothing to do with Death Stranding after the critical response was so bad at launch. It was bad. It but, was bad. but, but, then you release a director's cut that made a lot of people he trusts flip-flop on their original take, and now you've got a sequel that looks interesting. That's like 200 hours he could be spending working with me, and now he's going to play both games and ignore my emails. So, thanks a lot, sir. Stop, shout out, shout out. No, no shout outs here. Uh, Fortnite. Epic Games, you devious bastards. First, it was Zero Build Mode that brought in a whole new, I mean, old generation of gamers who only like the shooty parts and can't handle the Minecrafty parts. That Second, is that is me. Second, Goku and John Cena within weeks of each other. We famously botched the segment about Jordan and Fortnite collab years ago because I couldn't figure out what controls on the PS4 to use. Now, Co-Rider has Ariana Grande doing the Deku Smash while wearing a Spider-Verse style back bling and gliding into the island on a Nine Tails from Naruto. The only thing I understood from that sentence was Ariana Grande. Stop taking Co-Rider away from me. Oh, and Co-Rider's favorite Fortnite skins that dropped in 2022? Number five, Doom Guy. Number four, Spider Gwen. Okay. Number three, LeBron James Fortnite FC version. You I like that. Have your 20s in those. <laughs> Number two, Vegeta. Okay, Vegeta. And one, Hulk. Huh. 
It seems like an odd choice for number one, until you see him doing this. Yeah, even I can get behind that choice. Nike, for bringing back the Nike Air PD1 home colorway. Thanks, Nike. See, he's happy. Sure, co writer's happy ish. Eh. You can even argue he's actually content and mellow, but eh. Eh. yeah. The sneaker thing that he's chased for so long is now in his possession along with three extra pairs. Maybe so, four. Maybe four. So now what? He's been begging for an Air Pippin 2 retro for a while, but that seems like more of a matter of when and not if. He needs a challenge, a whale to chase. And then when we were doing our Scotty Pippen segment last week, it dawned on him, the Pippen 3. It's nowhere near as popular as the first two models or the uptempos, and that neglect is what fuels Co-Rider. So get ready for some Pippen 3 love on this show, whether you or I like it or not. Then we have The Rock. Look, if you haven't noticed by now, we're actually big fans of The Rock. Are we, we? Yes. Yes, we are. We joke about him constantly here on the show, but we joke because we care. Do we? Yes, we care. And because we know he's capable of so much better. After Black Adam didn't do well in the box office as the great one had hoped. And, I liked it. And with news that the new DCEU big boss, James Gunn, a.k.a. the guy who helped turn a D-list super team called the Guardians of the Galaxy into one of the biggest properties in the MCU, isn't keen on bringing back Black Adam at least in the current form. Then maybe Rocky will finally realize the hierarchy of power did change. Just not in the way that he wanted. Oops. Oops. Yeah, that's a big oops. Uh, Avatar. So Avatar is like Twitter. If you told oh, us... No, that's terrible. <laughs> if you told us that there was only ever one Avatar movie or that the second one tanked so bad that the series never continued, I think the world would be okay. I'd be okay. But unlike Twitter, Avatar did contribute something meaningful to the world. 3D sucks. Okay. 3D is awe-inspiring and beautiful to watch in Avatar, but that's because they spent $11 billion to make it look pretty and a thousand on the storytelling part. We think what James Cameron doesn't realize is if it were the other way around or the breakdown was a little more even, we'd be able to recite memorable lines from his movies like we do in MCU or Star Wars film. Instead, all we get are occasional photo shoots by IG models who are into the Navi look. Oh, and we're using that one screen cap because it's insane. Nine? Hours? Nine hours. Nine hours. I don't have the patience. And finally, <laughs> we'll always have genius. Well, the first half at least. But before Netflix has to take it down. Sometime anyway, next year. Sometime next year. All right. That's going to do it for the show. Thank you guys for watching Hard Pass this year. I am Jacques Slade. I'll see you in 2023. And me. And, and co-writer. If you would like to possibly be featured in a future episode, call us at 818-493-9325. Leave a short message. Your social media if you want. No more than 30 seconds. All right. I'll see you next week. Peace. Next week? From me and... I'll see. Sorry. I'll see you next year. From me and co-writer. Co-writer. Oh, my God. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>